brother, 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 brother. One more? Brother. Oh, yeah, there we go. It is Friday, August 5th. It is weird to think that we are already in August, but yeah. that, that we are. Uh, it is another episode of the Deep Six Wrestling Podcast. It is the Impact Power Hour. I'm Ryan. I'm Angelo. And Angelo, it's a, it's been a few few days since since it happened, but you oh, are yeah. now again the Deep Six champion. I am the Deep Six champion. Do you know if I went like perfect on my predictions? I'm sorry. I time? don't remember if you did. Your thing, your big thing was, I believe you went perfect on your key, uh, your lottery picks. I think where other people didn't. Nah. I had, uh-huh. yeah maybe maybe I had Becky I thought though oh yeah yeah you did so, yeah so you didn't do that okay I, yeah, I don't know I don't you know. must have gone you must have gone perfect then because yeah I know it was like a pretty you know predictable show like a chalk show yeah with, like no champions changed but I, like I, I felt like that would make sense because you know new era tri- Triple H isn't gonna just you know put the belt back on Austin Theory and oh you should have like you should yeah yeah apparently you should have so. Yeah, but uh, for the predictions for SummerSlam, Angela won them, and myself and Pat lost them, so we will be uh, eating some spicy ramen. Is this a first for Pat? It's the first in quite some time. It's a first in a while, at least. Yeah, yeah. I know you've lost a couple. I, I, I've lost quite a few, but uh, yeah. Pat, Pat is not a regular on the bottom of the uh, no. bottom 50%. No, bottom. not at all. Yeah, um, I think it just shows how how little we pay attention to the main roster of WWE, or at least we did. Oh, um, sure. yeah, it's on the big but... up. Apparently, I'm the big Monday Night Raw stand now because <laughs> I got uh, I won the yeah, yeah, you are WWE Big Four, so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so moving right along, we're gonna go right into uh, the episode, but before we do, uh, there is some news. Um. It was confirmed this week uh, by AEW that they have hired a new head coach for the women's division. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that women's division head coach is none other than Impact's own Madison Rain. So I guess she is done with Impact, moving on to bigger, brighter things in AEW. Um, But she was still on uh, the Impact still had tapings. So, you know. We'll, we'll see if it's just like uh, what what happens, but I think that this is the end of Madison Rain on on Impact for quite a while. Um, I'm and... genuinely surprised. I mean, I, yeah, she's a she's a good you know knowledgeable talent. She's been in the industry for a bit, especially you know women's wrestling. They usually don't have people that have been in the industry for over a decade really yeah. sticking around still. So um, I mean, it's a good get by AEW. I know it was kind of after some you know Jonathan Gresham related issues with the roster. So people were speculating, no, maybe Tony Khan's going to let, you know, bring in some other people to kind of help, you know, run the show a little bit more of the day to day stuff. And I think Madison rain, even though she's hired as a coach, I think, you know, part of the process too, is like, you know, kind of relationships with the talent on the women's side. So that's, it's a good get. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she is, I believe an eight time champion in impact with knockouts yeah. and tag reigns. Um, so uh, she is a good get. She's knowledgeable. What's, what's Jade's um, uh, manager's name? Uh, Stokely Hathaway. Or no, Stoke- no, 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 that's Stokely. It's uh, oh yeah, Stokely. Yeah. yeah, so Stokely did the. Yeah, I watched that video. He did from one beautiful person to another. I yeah. welcome you. Or one from one beautiful person to another beautiful person. I welcome you. Yeah, kind of absolutely. Like, An homage to you know her famous you know stint with the beautiful people. Yeah, everybody's favorite uh, wrestling stable of all time. Yeah, it's in it's mine for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, big big things there. Uh, it was confirmed uh, on Dark Elevation this week, um, the special Dark Elevation that they did, uh, that she will be uh, head coach. She'll be off screen, but she will also be an in ring competitor. Um, yeah. So I know when it was first said that she was going there, Angelo, me and you both kind of said, well, she she had already retired. Maybe she doesn't want to be on screen regularly like she has been for Impact. Yeah, and uh, we were quite wrong once she like made that announcement that she's there to like you know basically fight and 
is going to go after Jade Cargill. Pretty yeah. Soon, it seems like. That is surprising to me because it seems like she's been trying to wind it down for the past couple of years with Impact. But um, may- maybe it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like how Paul White was brought in to be. It, I, their age difference is very different. Madison Rain isn't that old, actually. Yeah. But, like, just from patterns where, like, it seems like she doesn't want to actually be an in-ring competitor that often. That's yeah. our guess. We don't actually know what she's thinking. But maybe she's going to be brought in like Paul White, like, well, she'll have a couple of matches, but not, you know, be a regularly featured talent. Yeah, hopefully she's doing three-on-one squash matches on uh, Dark Elevation soon. Yeah, I don't know if she's going to get that same type of arc as Paul White necessarily. <laughs> you don't uh, think so? I think no, that's I don't think so with the three-on-one squashes. Hopefully she brings the beautiful people in. Yeah, and, modern, that's who she, and that's who she squashes. Is the... Yeah, yeah two-on-one. <laughs> Beating Madison Rain. Right Lacey Von Eric. And, oh, you know, please. Yeah. There's your Lacey, we've got an extra spot for you on and <laughs> <laughs> a joint. Um, yeah, so that's one of the pieces of news. I, I don't know if you've touched elsewhere, you know, in our Deep Six Wrestling realm about a uh, Ric Flair retirement match. No, no, no. We have, at least I haven't. I don't think Pat did. Um, but yeah, the, Ric Flair's final match pay per view show existed. It happened. It kind of felt like an Impact Plus show. That's why I figured like, I wanted to just like briefly mention it. We don't have to like run yeah. down the card, but there was a lot of Impact you know, big players on there. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, the highlights of the night, everyone says, was the the Fatal 4-Way. It was Lucha Fatal 4-Way that featured yes. you know, Axe, Black Tarus, and Laredo Kid. Um, yeah. Another highlight was the Triple Threat. I like this match, the Triple Threat Women's Title Match, because uh, it was Deanna versus Jordan Grace, champion, versus Rachel Ellering. And we haven't seen Rachel Ellering in a while, so... You know, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, that was like kind of the, I think I mentioned it last week, that was kind of the blow-off match that, you know, we never got to see between Jordan and Rachel. Yeah. So, no, I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, Josh Alexander also was defending his title against MLW's Jacob Fatu. It ended in a screwy finish. This is weird because yeah. um, it ended in a screwy finish and Matt Cardona and Brian Myers are the ones that, you know, break it up. Really, I don't know if that leads to anything going forward. Like, I don't know how long you know Josh will hold the belt for the you know by the time Brian or not Brian Myers, but Cardona is healthy to wrestle again. Like he still had he had a, you know that kind of cast thing on his arm, the soft cast. Yeah, so he's definitely not cleared for like in ring competition, but he he did take a diamond cutter. He did. He did. See, so I think that the moment seemed to be more about DDT coming out there just to get you know a pop versus like setting up a future storyline. I did that. Cause especially after this episode, even though it was taped beforehand, I believe. Yes. Yeah. It was taped beforehand. There, there's no hint of, you know, some sort of brewing rivalry with Brian Myers or Cardona and Josh Alexander. So. Yeah. I, it'll be interesting. Uh, I think that uh, at least from what we've seen in impact um, Cardona has been Pretty pretty damn good, uh, as is this heel persona. It seems oh, yeah. like he's he's done with the digital media title since he he's lost that, and it's now on to Brian Myers, um, who they're basically partners in crime at this point together. Um, so I, I I'd say that maybe it's a safe bet that uh, eventually we get, depending on how long down the road it is, uh, Cardona in a world title picture. Uh, in impact um i again doesn't don't know how long he's going to be out for still um yeah. from his torn bicep which from what i've seen it's basically you, you, you it, for wrestlers it's basically around four to five months from yeah yeah uh, when he's, everything's done um yeah. and he's so, been a month or two into it now yeah so. yeah so maybe i mean the i he, he, I'm assuming he'll be back on TV maybe soon, because you like you don't have to wrestle. You can have like you know Brian Myers do your wrestling for you. Yeah, it, but it depends. I, yeah, it definitely depends. I mean, like we know we know Cardona's taking bookings. He's going to be at GCW next week, not you know in a wrestling capacity, but he's going to be there. You know, yeah, renewing his vows. That should be entertaining. So he's he's doing things. He's not like, yeah. you know, totally uh, on the shelf. I, I feel like. Uh, you know that's what we used to be accustomed to with WWE. It's like if you're hurt, you're 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 off TV. That's it. And you, if you have a tag team partner that's healthy, forget it. They're off TV too. So like we're I think we're just so accustomed to that 
where like we've seen now like Young worked through his injury, like not as a wrestler. Yeah. He just he was a valuable piece of the roster. He was you know a big mouthpiece for Violent by Design. He kept that stable alive. So yeah. I, I think you know, and Cardona seems to be interested in you know continu- continuing to pursue the wrestling world, even though he's you know injured and, and rehabbing. So he's still doing it right, but he's still trying to you know keep his face on TV at least. Yeah. Um. So yeah. It- It'll be interesting. I think that tonight's episode kind of set up who his Bound for Glory opponent could be, or I think should be. Um, maybe. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah. But, yeah, uh, with that, uh, make sure to follow. Uh, I guess we should also talk about, uh, just just very briefly, Ric Flair did not die in the ring. He did uh, not he, die. He, was, no. he looked very close to death. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, yeah. He, he did not look good. Um, yeah, I was like, I, we don't need to touch on the match further. No, no impacts, uh, you know, yeah, not. yeah, other than Jeff Jarrett, I, Jeff, no, Jeff Jarrett not, being an excellent heel, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Karen Jarrett, yeah, they were yeah. they were riling up that crowd, I must say. So, yeah, but. they they were great. Um, I don't think anybody thought Ric Flair was gonna be great in ring. But I don't know if anybody thought it was going to be as bad as that, where he was barely able to take a bump. Yeah, no, that's kind of what I expected based on uh, the preview videos we were getting. So. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, he did bleed, uh, but he did he he did not he did not go down. Uh, he, he he went out with a win. Uh, he he wasn't laying down for nobody. No, no, he's not laying down for Jay Lethal. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, on to the show. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media at Deep Six Wrestling on Twitter. Uh, follow or subscribe to the po- uh, subscribe to our YouTube uh, at the Deep Six Wrestling Podcast, uh, and subscribe to our podcast on any of the different platforms we're on. We're on basically all the major podcast platforms: Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Anchor, all that jazz. Uh, and a few others. Um, but yeah, uh, we didn't watch BTI this week because we saw what the match was and we were like, we can go without it. It was Alicia Edwards versus Savannah Evans. Um, yeah, the, just wasn't furthering any storylines in our knowledge. And, you know, it's a lot of wrestling. There's a lot of things in our lives. Uh, yeah, we and, took a pass this week. So we'll yeah. start with the, the main show. Yeah, main show starts with Deanna Peraza versus Rosemary. I feel like it's rare that we get the women starting off the show. It is usually rare. Usually it's like an X division match. Yeah. But um no, it was it was a good it was a good one to start with. Yeah. Um Rosemary comes out with Taya and Jessica. Uh remember Jessica as commentary says is with a C and a K because she's sick. Ah. Um yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, so uh I felt like this match was more about Deanna just dominating Rosemary. Commentary pointed out that Deanna has never lost a singles match to Rosemary uh, in her career. Um, Deanna just felt like she was the much stronger opponent throughout. She kept on getting a hold of Rosemary's arm and wrist. Uh, there was a spot where Rosemary was laying down on the ground. Uh, Deanna had uh, her foot on her hand, and as Rosemary was trying to get out from under it, Deanna did a stomp on her uh, arm, uh, which looked pretty painful. Um, they did do a slow-mo replay of it to try to showcase just how damaging this move was. Um, doesn't look pretty. Doesn't look nice. Um, but... Yeah, uh, it did look like her her arm kind of like bent in weird ways, but I'm assuming it's one of those like she's double jointed type things. Oh yeah, yeah. like uh, like Alexa Bliss and others who have taken those moves in like WWE, um, where like they mess up, it makes it look like the arm snaps, uh, but they're yeah. perfectly fine. I, I mean, for me, for me, this match was more about like how does how does Havoc kind of you know act now? Yes, now this was like kind of her first. Act basically being, you know, not just behind the, you know, behind the camera. Like this is her first reaction, like in front of a crowd. So she was awkward naturally, like you know how it's supposed to be. Um, but 
I, I, she basically cost Rosemary the match there. It seemed like at first she gave Rosemary kind of an advantage. Deanna got distracted, and Rosemary, you know, was able to capitalize. But then she, ha- Jessica, was distracting the ref so damn much that yeah. Rosemary couldn't. I mean, she was trying to do the, and then um, uh, Deanna ends up rolling her up. So I, th- I thought Rosemary looked, you know, as good as she could against someone that's pretty not. Not necessarily untouchable, but they're not just going to have them lose like random singles matches. So. Yeah, yeah. The definitely the story is like, how is Jessica going to work with the rest of them? Uh, is she going to be a hindrance to Taya and Rosemary, or is she going to help them? Is she going to be able to to work with them? Um, and yeah, as you point out, she started by helping, allow, d- distracting Diana, but it, it just went on too much, and the ref had to try to calm it down. And this allowed Deanna to get a lot of time on the ground to, to you know, avoid the pin, basically. Um, yeah, uh, so Deanna picks up the win. Um, this would take us to an Honor No More segment backstage. Uh, Matt Taven says that this is going to be the biggest match for them at Emergence. Uh, and it's all about trust. We need to trust each other. We need to trust ourselves um, because we can't let uh, P- Bullet Club get in our head too much. We can't let Heath get in our head. We need to be all looking out for uh, to make sure that you know we know what's going on. Um, and uh, Eddie says that uh, he trusts every one of us of them that is here because he's been with them for so long. He's been with them since the beginning. Uh, but the one person he doesn't trust is PCO. Uh, Vincent says PCO has been with them since they first showed up in, in impact. Um, he, he hasn't done anything to hurt, uh, I no more. Yes. He's taken, he, he's lost a match or two, uh, but he, he's not like out to hurt the team. He's not doing things to ruin the team. He's not trying to undermine them. He's not working with Heath. He's not working with bullet club. He's not the to need to do those type of things anyway. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Eddie says that, you know, if PCO wants to prove himself, he has to take Gallows out of the equation from emergence by taking him out tonight in the street fight. Um, yeah. Um, basically, Eddie continues to hate on PCO. Um, this has been something that's been happening for months now. Um, and yeah. Uh, Giselle Shaw then has an interview backstage with Gia. Uh, Gia asks uh, Giselle what she's gained from uh, watching Masha and kind of running from her. Uh, Giselle says she hasn't been running from Masha, but she was trying to scout her to see if there was any um, anything that she could do to gain stuff from uh, her and that she thinks she, she knows some of her weaknesses now. Um, um, then she gives, uh, Gia the picture, the the death warrant, as they've been calling it, uh, and says that, you know, she doesn't need it anymore. Uh, and that the picture isn't even a good picture of her anyway, because her eyebrow looks crooked. Um, this would take us to Black Tarus versus Brian Myers for the digital media championship. Um, we, we were talking about how, how, uh, last week, when they made this match, how is Brian Myers going to be able to get out of, himself out of this one? You know, he talked himself backstage to try to avoid um, Bupinder's challenge uh, for the title that he had already given the title to somebody, uh, shot to somebody, uh, and that person was Brian Myers, um, uh, or not Brian Myers, Black Tarus, uh, because Crazy Steve interrupted him and was like, oh, thanks for giving Black Tarus a title shot back there. And he, he wasn't going to say he didn't do that because that would ruin his whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so, face the pin there, so. All right. So we get Black Tarus, we get Brian Myers. And honestly, this is a, a pretty interesting matchup. Uh, I, I don't think we've gotten this. Uh, yeah, it was but, a fresh matchup, definitely. Yeah. Um, we're not we're not getting too too much action here. I feel like you know it was no. kind of Brian Myers doing a slow pace, kind of trying to throw Black Tarus off, which you expect. He's a heel. He's playing a good deal, um, yeah. and, and this isn't really a storyline match. He didn't expect Black Tarus to come in here and win the belt. So no, 
Uh, I do think Black Turs did uh, have a really cool move off the top rope in this point in this match. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like some sort of uh, I think stomp uh, from the top rope that looked really cool. Uh, yes. Um, Black Turs, uh, as we've said since we started seeing him in Impact, um, he, he's very underrated. Uh, he's a very underrated worker. He's very good. Um, enjoy him very much so. Um, Brian Myers gets out of the uh, the the Power Bowl as they called it, um, and by poking the eyes of Black Tarus, uh, which gave him the chance to roll him up. Uh, his and apparently the ref couldn't see that Brian oh Myers' my whole arm was on the rope. Not only that, Black Turris's legs were through the ropes. <laughs> yeah, like no, none of that really made sense to me. That was a no. pretty poor finish. Yeah, like the yeah, ref was fine clearly with... like angled straight at this, like and looking look at, at it all. Everything. Unless it, like his head was like literally against, like looking at the mat and just you know yeah. slapping the count like that. I don't know, man. There's no excuse to not see that. That was a little silly. It was a little poor yeah. execution on that. Yeah. Um, but but he retains and he tries to hightail it out of there. But Bupinder comes down. He throws him back into the ring. Uh, and Crazy Steve, uh, uh, Tarus, and Bupinder all hit their finishers on him, uh, laying him out. Uh, and commentary says that Bupinder must be in line for a title shot soon. Uh, so I'm assuming that we get this at, at probably the emergence pre-show. Give it. Yeah, probably the pre-show because it is digital media. But yeah, give it to him at emergence. Um, yeah, they keep highlighting you know Bupinder's on a hot streak. He hasn't lost in like seven months since being here. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, you know if Brian Myers picks up the win here. If he if he loses, if there's some shenanigans, I assume there's going to be shenanigans. I don't, uh, I don't. I don't know if they're going to curb the momentum of Bupinder though. That's, that's, that's fair. I'm I'm not sure about the results of this because yeah. Brian Myers, you kind of want to, you know, give him keep giving him something to do. He's entertaining and he's one of your better assets on the. But you you build up Bupinder, and I don't think they're just gonna, you know, have him like, uh, win via countout or something silly. That's at fair. I I don't know though. We, we could see. Yeah. Uh, after this, we get a Jordan Grace promo. Uh, she talks about how she views every opponent of hers as an obstacle, and you know what she does to obstacles? She breaks them, mm-hmm. and. That's what she's going to do to Mia Yim. Uh, she works well with others. She's a great talent. But uh, when it comes to one-on-one matches, Jordan says that whenever she's looking at an opponent, uh, she always views them as just an, another obstacle. Uh, and she knows that this title means the world to her. And she knows that the title means a lot to Mia, but it means more to her in the long run. Um, this would take us to highlights from Jacob Fatu versus Josh Alexander. Uh, it shows the Matt Cardona and Brian Myers and smart Mark Sterling interference, as well as uh, some of the moves from the big moves, big spots from the match and uh, DDP making the save for Josh. Um, this would take us right into uh, Giselle Shaw versus Masha Slamovich. Um, interesting here. Uh, cause we, this has been building for quite some time. Uh, didn't know how this was going to be because, you know, it's Giselle's somebody who, who's also somewhat new to the company as well as Masha. Yeah. Uh, she's been some, somewhat protected, not as much as Masha where Masha hasn't had any real, uh, threats. Uh, I don't know if Giselle's taken pins. I feel like she, it's always been somebody else that she's pin. It was, she's with. Well, she's that been one of them lady cross. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, you're right. So you're right. But but yeah, for the most part, Giselle's looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, um, is, yeah, been their point. I will say, I thought this match was going to start something similar to what how the Brian Myers match started, but you can, it's not good to have two of those on the card because like her Giselle's promo was she was saying, you know that uh, she, she was going to like maybe slow the pace down is how I interpreted her promo. Yeah, so she's gonna try to do that, but it really wasn't that at all. But but she did look good in this match. Yeah, in moments. Yeah. Uh, so Giselle ends up uh, kick being the first person to kick out of any move that Masha has done. Right. Uh, 
Masha went with a suplex, uh, which got a two count. Uh, jo- uh, Giselle would then follow it up with a knee strike to the head of uh, Masha, and she is also the first person to attempt a pinfall on Masha, yeah, getting a two count. That's impressive because this is, you know, she's beaten now Havoc, Tennille, Madison, Madison. Rain, and yeah. lit- Litany of Jobbers, but, you know, I like pretty good for Giselle. Be better yeah. Than them. Yeah, um, she also, uh, uh, this is easily the longest match that Masha has had since signing with the company. Um, but it still wasn't long. No, <laughs> it wasn't, it still it wasn't, wasn't it, no. It wasn't like more than three minutes still, but yeah. Yeah, um, but she does pick up the win with the snowplow. Uh, we did see Masha get a little bit uh, annoyed uh, about the match going a little longer than uh, her, the rest of hers. Uh, but yeah, she does pick up the win. The streak is now up to fourteen and zero. Yeah, um, pretty good. After this, uh, this would take us to our impact flashback moment of the week. It is from April fifth, twenty sixteen. It is where Mia Yim wins her knockouts championship against Madison Rain and Gail Kim uh, with help from Maria Canellis that they don't show. Yeah, I was gonna say um, they kind of skipped that part. <laughs> yeah. Um Mia, uh back then known as Jade, uh picks up the win with an STO over Gail Kim. Um and this would take us to backstage. Mia and Gia were watching it apparently backstage. Uh Madison Rain comes over and uh has, is upset that they were trying to kick her while she's down since she had just lost to Masha. She had just gotten her face reconstructed from surgery um and uh now they're trying to make fun of her and bring up one of her worst moments in in impact history um and mia says you know i'm not trying to kick you while you're down but i will kick you while while you're standing up if you want to have a match and you know uh show that you're you're better than me or try to show that you're better than me. Uh, Madison says she doesn't need to deal with this, and she tries to walk off, but Gail Kim shows up. She says, look at this reunion, back to the good old days, and you know how much I love the good old days. Um, and says that, you know, she heard what was being said, uh, and that next uh, next week, uh, Madison versus uh, Mia will happen, uh, just to yeah. prove who's the best out of them. And uh, you know, knowing what we know now about Madison going to AEW, this is, I guess, her swan song. Yeah. An impact for the foreseeable future. So, Yeah, unless she wins. She's going to win, and she's going to get put into the emergence card, and then she's going to win at emergence yeah. uh, and take the belt to, to AEW. Champ, champ, challenge. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, after this, backstage, Rosemary is pouting uh, in this dark corridor. Um, I do have to say this is probably the only real production issue I had with this show. Um, when Taya and Jessica walk in, the focus of the camera just gets lost and it just becomes super fuzzy for no apparent reason for about like 10 seconds. And I was yeah, very confused on why. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, Rosemary is upset that Jessica cost her the match. Jessica says that she's not; she wants to help her because this is still a family to her. Uh, you guys have helped me uh, find out like all about this stuff because I'm I'm so new to it, um, and I really enjoy being with you guys. And I, I plan on coming out to ringside with you guys at Emergence. Because uh, we're a family, and I guarantee you two are going to walk out still the champs at emergence. Or should I say emergency? Wee woo, wee woo. Somebody call the wambulins. Um, yeah, so she, she had um, Rosemary in the first half, and then oh, yeah. started going off on that tangent. Rosemary was very upset again. So. Yeah. Um, She's lost her monster. Yeah, yeah, no, she she's she's lost her monster and gained the, gained a cringe ed, edge lord. Um, okay. uh, after this, we get Violent by Design, uh, represented by Diener and Joe Doring versus the Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. 
Um, I thought this was a really good match. Uh, the first third of this match was all belonging almost exclusively to the Motor City Machine Guns, except for the opening uh, moment where Joe Doring immediately blasts Alex Shelley from behind. Um, because as Alex Shelley almost always starts his matches, he whenever he starts, he just like runs around the ring kind of. Uh, to like kind of size up his opponent, and when he did does that and gets into the cor- uh, in front of uh, Violent by Design's corner, Joe Doring just gets on in, hits him from behind, gets on out, um, and allows Diener to take control. But Saban came in to try to back him up, uh, and led to some double team offense for the Mercy Machine Guns, just switching on and off. Um, but again, the issue comes up again where Alex Shelley is wrestling Diener too close to. Uh, Violent by Design's corner. Uh, Doring again would take a shot at Shelley, uh, and this would allow Diener to make the tag. And now Joe Doring was going to dominate for a bit uh, in the ring. Um, doing, I, they called it his little, uh, it was like ricochet uh, elbow drop uh, right. something. I to- I, but I didn't write down what they called it. Um, I, I just really like the move. Uh, he kind of throws you down for like a bulldog and then runs against the rope and just drops himself on you. Um, I like the move. Uh, he did do his grunt and his growl uh, with the fist bump. I always enjoy that when he does that. So props to Joe Doring for doing that. Um, but then uh, the th- final third of the match was all about Motor City Machine Guns finally taking control. Uh, Chris Saban got his hot tag started running rough shot. Shelly, while this was all going on, was taking out Doring on the outside, uh, and this allowed Chris Sabin to do a suicide dive to finish him off. Uh, Shelly got back in, uh, and I didn't realize that he wasn't... I, I was like, oh, he must have tagged back in, because he starts hitting offense. He hits a crucifix bomb on uh, Diener, but he's just holding him in place for uh, Chris Sabin to make a diving pin uh, to fit, uh, pin Diener, and pick up the win for Motor City and Machine Guns. This was a hell of an enjoyable match, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, Diener and Doring are not a- happy about this. They lay out the Motor City and Machine Guns before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kushida comes out to try to make the save as Motor City and Machine or, or as uh, Diener is wailing on Alex Shelley with a uh, flat with the Violent by Design flag. Uh, Kushida lays out Diener for a bit, but then he goes for the uh, hoverboard lock on uh, Dean or uh, on Doring, and this allows for Eric Young to make his appearance. Uh, comes in, knocks Kushida down, and then hits him with the uh, pile driver. Really good, uh, sick looking pile driver. It looked like Kushida's head just bounced off this, uh, and uh, Vano by design stand tall um this would be nice to see eric young like kind of save the day because you know there's been that qualm of like you know how much does he want to be you know working with doring and diener but here he came to save you know save it you know beat up kushida and make sure diener and doring were standing tall with him yeah um after this we'd go i guess this would take us normally to a commercial break but since we watched it on youtube don't get commercials, and it's immediately uh, Motor City Machine Guns are backstage with Kushida. They challenge uh, Violent by Design to a match uh, at Emergence. So Saban and Kushida. Yes, Shelley. Saban. Yeah, because Shelly is going to be facing Josh at the show. Uh, Saban and Kushida. Saban says that uh, two two parts of the Triforce are still together. Uh, we've worked together as a tag team before in New Japan. Uh, and we're going to do it again, and we're going to beat uh, Violent by Design. Uh, Josh shows up uh, and basically gives the same pep talk that Shelly did last week to Josh, saying, hey, you know, I want you at your, your best. I don't want you focusing on other people. Just focus on the world title match, um, and I want the best version of you and not, like, a beaten-down version, uh, to which Shelly says that he, he will. Um, Josh walks off and is approached by Eddie Edwards in, in the damn corridor with the, the staircase, which echoes everything. Um, 
Eddie basically says that I heard what you I, I was listening into what you were talking about there with Alex Shelley, and you're right, Shelley isn't. Uh, he's not paying attention to the world title, and as somebody who who has had the world title, uh, you, you're probably going to beat him because he's not focusing. You got to focus everything on that. Um, but you also, when you're the champ, as I've done in the past. You have to make sure that you're also worrying about what's going on elsewhere and not just looking out at the mountaintop and saying that you're on top and nobody can threaten you because the things that are happening below the mountain are you might not be able to see, but they can really influence what happens in the long run. Uh, I, I know that when I was on top, I didn't look at what was happening around and that, that allowed people to get the title away from me. Uh, so just don't want that to happen to you. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of things that are happening around here. Uh, and you need to try to figure out who who's trying to work with you and who's gonna, you know, who, who's gunning for you. Um, I, I think this is, we're finally getting to the Eddie Edwards versus Josh feud that I think we've been thinking was going to happen for quite some time, but for some reason they decided, Hey, we're just going to go with honor. No more versus bullet club for months on end and keep on repeating almost the exact same match. Um, so hopefully this means that we're finally getting Eddie versus Josh. I think this makes sense for a bound for glory matchup. Yeah. That's what I'm leaning towards that. It'll just be interesting to see kind of like if he has honor, no more behind him or not, depending on yes. the outcome of emergence. Yeah. yeah weekend so i agree it will be definitely interesting to see next week what happens uh in that match um after this um we get raj singh versus sammy callahan Uh, poor raj singh here yeah uh raj got this match because you know last week he was complaining that uh josh alexander well this wasn't clear to us last week at least to me i didn't think that like they said shira broke his ankle yeah, I I didn't think it was like an actual injury. I still no. don't know if it's an actual injury. I no, no, it. it's 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 for sure kayfabe, but like yeah. like commentators didn't because well no, they never com- said like what the injury was. They were just like, oh, his ankle's bothering him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even know if they said that because was like he was just holding on the hold for like his ankle lock for a while on yeah Josh Alexander last week in his match against Shira. So then. Raj, you know, jumps in the ring, grabs the mic and say, this is an injustice. What happened here? But like, we didn't know what happened. It just looked like yeah. Kira lost the match fair and square. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that, that, that was interesting to kind of learn that tidbit and why he was upset last week. Yeah. Um, Sammy came out last week and just took the ring and attacked Raj after the match, basically. Uh, so this week, you know, got, got one-on-one. And this was just a basically a squash match for Sammy to take him, uh, to run Raj out of there for a bit. Um, he gets on the mic. He says, "You know, I've still got stuff in the tank. Uh, I want Moose. Oh yeah, I want Macklin. Somebody come out here. Moose's music hits. Um, and as the lights are, the spotlight comes on. You can see that's totally not Moose. It's Macklin <laughs> in his spot. Um, and the lights come on." And Moose is a, uh, went for the lights out spear, but Sammy, I guess, had figured it all out uh, and dodged it. Uh, and he starts laying out Moose. Um, Macklin hey, comes in. He's, yeah, he starts holding his own against both these guys. Uh, but finally, uh, Macklin hits him with a low blow. This allows Moose to hit the lights out spear. They look at each other, and then he just rolls, Moose rolls out. Macklin gets him in the middle of the ring. Hits him with uh, a DDT, which they call the KIA, or the Killed in Action, uh, and lays out Sammy and walks off. Uh, and yeah, um, Sammy and, and Macklin seem destined for a match, and they would announce after this that Sammy versus Macklin is happening at Emergence. Um, We would then get a Killer Kelly vignette talking about what happened last week. Um, And that... I don't remember. She basically just beat up on two jobbers. Yes. Uh, And that she, she's, she's, she only wanted originally just the the winner of that match. uh, But because Jada had still been in the ring, that was just a bonus for her to be able to dish out pain on somebody else. 
uh, and she wants to do this more. Um, so Killer Kelly has some problems. She probably yes. has to be a therapist yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people see therapists, some, some people become pro wrestlers. Yeah, exactly. At Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, commentary points out that next week will be Killer Kelly's in ring debut. Uh, we have a lot of matches that they run down for next week, uh, including uh, Diener versus Kushida, Madison Rain versus Mia Yim. Speedball Mike Bailey versus Rocky Romero for the X Division title. Uh, Kenny King versus Carl Anderson. And Josh uh, Alexander and Alex Shelley's contract signing for their match at Emergence. Um, that we also learned that the winner of Speedball Mike Bailey versus Rocky Romero would be facing off against Jack Evans at yeah. Emergence which, for the X Division title. Which I guess kind of is his reward for not being able to compete when he was supposed to at Slammiversary. Yes. So, I mean, it, it's a cool matchup. Jack Evans, like I said, doesn't really have a history with impact outside of, like, when they re- revitalized the X Division. He was in that title match that, you know, or not title match even. It was a contract match that Austin Aries ended up winning. That's, yes. That's his history, really, with impact. But he was supposed to be in Slammiversary. It was an injury, right? Yes. Yeah, he got injured, like, the night before. Yeah, exactly. Like, a, a Evolve show or something. Yeah, he's so, some sort of uh, indie show. Yeah, exactly. So, and now he's getting his chance at Emergence. I think that'll be a good matchup. He He's a little older now than he was when he was last in Impact, but uh, he is a high flyer still, and I'm sure him and Bailey or him and Romero would be excellent. Yeah. Um, should be good. It'll be interesting to see if Jack Evans sticks around, if he's just going to be like a plug-and-play guy where they can call upon him every so often to just show up because he's not like officially signed there or if he is going to sign there and who knows we'll see um after this we get a bullet club promo um carl anderson saying that gallows is going to end pco tonight permanently um good luck with that uh we've got gallows saying that you know he's tired of pco he's tired of this whole monster thing uh, he's the bigger man, and he's going to end him. Uh, and then we've got Chris Bay and Ace Austin just adding stuff about the five-on-five. Five. Uh, and, yeah, this was go to our PCO versus Doc Gallows in a Derby City street fight. Uh, we've got tables. We've got chairs. We've got trash cans. We've got a drum set all at ringside here. Uh, commentary says the drum set was loaned to them from the University of Louisville. I don't think they're getting their deposit back on that. Absolutely not. Um, so, again, I think this continues with our streak of Doc Gallows and singles matches in Impact are hella surprisingly good. Um, this was a very fun match. Um, it was. Uh, we had some spots that I, I'm not... Uh, I'd say we're not really used to seeing in uh, street fights. Uh, maybe that's because of PCO. Maybe it's because it's two bigger guys. Um, we, we start off with PCO and Gallows brawling for a bit. PCO puts some chairs uh, back to back on the outside. Uh, and he looks like he's going to go for like a suplex over the ropes of Gallows. But Gallows just kicks him. Uh, and oh, yeah. That first PCO- spot was just like, oh, boy. PCO's in for a beating. <laughs> He <laughs> CEO just like looks over at the chairs, lets his hand go, it just falls and tries to make sure that his back goes square on to the, the middle of yeah. the chairs. Good. <laughs> My man does yeah. not care about that body. Bring on the pain. Uh Gallows then sets up two chairs uh upside down. Uh, and commentary is like, I've never seen somebody try to drive somebody through chairs like that. Uh, he never does. Um, he ends up moving the chairs. Uh, PCO ends up moving the chairs to stack some more chairs back to back. Uh, in the corner, he, he lays uh, gallows on top of them. <laughs> and he goes for the top, uh, onto the top rope to try to dive right onto his back. Uh, but Gallows gets up and choke slams him through the chairs. Um, uh, this would then the match would then devolve onto the ape or, uh onto the outside. Uh, Gallows uh, clears off the table. Uh, PCO ends up choke slamming Gallows through the table. Um, mm-hmm. 
and this allows PCO to unleash his master plan, which is he wants to take out Gallows, like uh, Eddie had said. Uh, so he goes and he grabs some scissors and he just starts cutting up the apron and the the canvas of the ring. Um, Gallows then finally stirs and he doesn't see PCO, so he starts taking stuff out of the garbage can. Uh, PCO comes over, hits Gallows down, grabs the garbage can, and just starts wailing on Gallows' head. Like eight the... times, just smash yeah. him in the head of the trash can. This was this was uh, this was great stuff. Um, Gallows sells it like absolute death. Uh, this allows uh, PCO to finish up what he was doing. He pulls back the canvas. He gets in the ring to pull back on the. Uh, padding, uh, and as he does this, uh, Gallows gets in the ring uh, and hits him with the gas mask. Um, mm-hmm. And then <laughs> PCO goes <laughs> goes to the top or uh, knocks down Gallows. He throws. Uh, he goes back on the outside. Uh, he gets the drum set. He throws Gallows through the drum set. Uh, and then he lays them up like he's going to hit the deanimator on the exposed uh, outside apron. Uh, but Gallows gets up, choke slams him through the ring. The ring just breaks. Sure. <laughs> and Gallows goes to look like he's going to pull uh, PCO up. He realizes he can't. So he's just like, you know what? Screw it. Count to 10. And they get to 8. PCO stands up. PCO. <laughs> PCO ends up brawling a little bit more with Gallows. Uh, he knocks Gallows down again. He goes and grabs a glove with a bag of of thumbtacks. He then puts the thumbtacks into the glove and throws some thumbtacks around the ring. Uh, I expected that this was going to be the finish that like Heath was going to come out and like last call or wake up call. Uh, uh, PCO either at the end of the match or after the match onto the thumbtacks. Uh, that did not happen. No. Uh, uh, but instead, we do have uh, him going and just dropping a punch down onto Gallus from the top. Probably rope. with a fistful of thumbtacks. I really didn't get yeah. this spot because it's like, no. it probably just hurts PCO more. He's just, yes. just you know clenching, clenching the thumbtacks in his hand. They weren't like sticking out of his. You know, hand. I, I I don't know. That was kind of weird, but Luke Allis sold it. Uh, yeah. PCO got the win off that. Yeah, he he falls into the the hole, the hole and get out of that. Yeah, PCO has beaten Doc Gallus. Yeah, on the main event. Yeah. Um, how do you even like set up for like just a part of the ring to like fall like that? Do they I've got pull? no idea. They must have like pulled out support like during a commercial break or something because that's that's interesting. Yeah, because like uh, you know you, you, that that was definitely a match at the end of the, whatever taping night. So like they didn't, yeah. people weren't just working around that the whole night. I would imagine, right? Or there was like, <laughs> <all the laughs> you know, I, I hope that this is that's what happened. It's like that. This is like the beginning of a pay, of the taping. They're just like, don't 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 go to this spot. Yeah, just, they just do this spot, the corner. and then they don't fix it. So next week, there's just like a gaping hole in the middle of the ring. Oh, that would be great. And everybody has to avoid the hole. I would, so. I would enjoy that greatly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a fun, fun match. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, and yeah, I give this match a big old thumbs up. Or yeah, the show a big old thumbs up. Big hoss fight. I, it was oh a great my gosh, match. it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, the match was fantastic, and yeah, the whole card I give a thumbs up today, um, or yesterday. But um, PCO man, I'm gonna stand by my. You know, bold prediction. I think he's going to hold a Impact World Title next year. Oh man! Like this is the second, you know, multiple times now he's main evented your Impact TV show. Um, I think they're building him up for something big, and now we're we're kind of seeing the pieces for Eddie Edwards versus Josh Alexander. I think there's a chance that PCO in the next year is going to find himself in a title fe- feud. So. You're not going to just build up this man for no reason unless, you know, he, I mean, you know, he's a good attraction, really, because he's a, yeah. an older guy, he's bigger, and he just throws his body around left and right. So, I mean, Ring of Honor gave him a world title, right? So, yeah, Impact could definitely do the same. Yeah. 
Um, so that's going to be it for this week. Uh, next week, uh, we w- went down the card. They did, as we said, add Sammy Callahan and uh, Macklin for Emergence, as well as Violent by Design versus Kushida and Chris Sabin, and Jack Evans versus the winner of Rocky Romero and Speedball Mike Bailey for the X Division title next week. Uh, so good things looking looking forward to uh, next week. We've got uh, the go home show for emergence and then emergence next, uh, next Friday, yes, a week sir. from today. So good stuff. Um, other than that, we will talk to you guys next week. Yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>